and in theory we are on the air hello everybody i'm gonna check my volume quick um hi it's been a while since i've been here with you and i'm so sad about that but uh it's been a busy month and that's what happens during busy months but i know we have uh at here on her last day at work Hey, congratulations. And Tara's here knitting sharks. And Joy is here from Chiang Mai, Thailand. Because we're international, you know. And uh, this is not a product placement. I'll kind of do that. I'm just really thirsty right now. It's been so allergenic here lately. I don't know what it is, but it's drying everything out and making me miserable and it's very 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 unpleasant um in fact today is the first day in a really long time that i have been able to put anything even remotely like makeup near my eyes my eyes were <laughs> big rings of misery <laughs> just a couple days ago and that was really scary because uh sunday night i got a cold and you can still hear it in my throat a little bit and um and Wednesday, tomorrow, is the beginning of the 1984 podcast, which I'll tell you more about in a minute. But I was just praying that I was going to be able to put something on my eyes to make me look a little bit more alive and awake. But it's okay. I'm doing okay. Not normal. But <laughs> And Tara said, as we said last year this time, tree sex sucks. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And it is, in fact, tree sex that is killing me because it's birch trees. And I evidently have moved to the land of birch trees, even though outside my window, all I can see is fir trees. There are birches out there somewhere, which is with capital B's or what they, that's what I'm calling them, witch trees. Um, I have some fun stuff to share with you. So I want to first share the thing that I was completely randomly sent over uh, over the weekend, I think. And this little pattern is so awesome uh, for a couple of reasons. One, they're really cute. Two, they're really small. Love the small things. Three, it looks like the little legs must have wire in them because it looks like they're pinching they're pinching her fingers. I mean, they're they're sitting on her fingers so so firmly and tightly, and it looks all wonderful and everything. Um, they're so small. I was sitting there looking at them, going, "Gosh, what kind of jewelry wire could she possibly be using?" And then I started reading comments on the Instagram page where this actually originally started, and. One of the Instagrammers said, and I think she's right because I'm going to see if I can zoom your picture of this in closer. Yes. Ooh, that actually came out pretty good. So if you look especially at the tail of the second one down, you can see how the body crochets down into, uh, uh, tapers off. But then there's this curly tail. And it looks like what she did is she wrapped the tail part, whatever it turned out to be, it could have even been braided at that point. She wrapped the tail part with the colored, uh, it sure looks like she was using um, like the DMC floss, doesn't it? Maybe not. No, it, I don't know. It looks to me like she's using a gradiated DMC floss. Somebody in the chat room, correct me if you disagree, because I'm still thinking. But um, Tara says floss too. All right, we've got two for floss. <laughs> we'll take votes. Um, but it uh, it looks like she was wrapping, and then right there you can see. I'm assuming you guys can see the my arrow pointer. Right there, you can see one place where she took a strand of this color, the inner wrap, and tacked it to the original tail bit. 
And I think that's how she managed to get it to curl around. Even though right there, it looks like there must be wire. I don't think there's wire. And um, and the, the woman who was talking on Instagram also said that wrapping the legs, and you can tell that the legs are indeed wrapped, but they're wrapped over single crochets because those little hand handy things, hand hand handiness. Let's see if I can get even closer. <laughs> Those sure look like chains to me. Don't they? Don't they look like chains to you? So that it was wrapped from up here down to here. And then this is the, the end of the chaining. Toes, thank you. Yes, they're not feety things. They're toey to things. <laughs> so I thought that was really quite marvelous and very creative. And then, and then I got very, very sad because ah, the woman who made these, these specific ones, she's Russian and she doesn't sell patterns. She only sells stuff on Etsy, which is very sad because those are really adorable, right? But we have, I now have to return this to the normal size. Um, we have a wonderful listener and viewer who found on Ravelry this pattern. So Tara, T-E-R-A, Kuling, K-U-L-L-I-N-G. And they're awfully close. Although these to me do not look like they're done with floss. These look to me like they're done, done with small, thin yarn. And it looks like she did, at least in part, reverse engineer it. She didn't do the wrapping. She didn't do the wrapping, and I was looking more closely. I, I can't tell if she did the collar differently. But it does look like she did a pretty decent job reverse engineering it. So, <gasps> Kathy's here. Hi, Kathy. Yay. So I, I just was, I went all gooey eyed over that. And by the way, the pattern is available for free. So even more better. I, I go through those phases where it's like, all I want is to amigurumi something, or I want a little tiny knights on a cork something or things like that. And so right now I'm afraid it's chameleons. But I like, I also like the idea of using the multicolored floss and letting that just kind of determine the color for you because then I don't have to think. I just have to go and grab some of the floss, which I also like. Along that same line, when I was out in California last August and I was staying with my friend Sam, we went to her local yarn store and I found a pattern like at the last second, we were almost walking out the door and I went, oh, wait, that looks kind of cool. It's a Stephen West pattern. It's the first time I bought one of the Stephen West patterns uh, on paper. And this is called Spectra. And then an even better -er picture is, yes, pipe cleaners. Joy, I was wondering about the pipe cleaners too for the little legs on the chameleon, that that's, that was the only other thing I could think of that would possibly hold, um, hold the legs in and still let you wrap tight enough. But, but then I looked at it again and I thought, man, unless she has hands as big as mine or bigger, those are really tiny legs. So there's another, another couple looks at the Stephen West pattern. Hmm. We're doing the weird focusy thing again. You get the picture. Anyway, I liked it. I liked it and I looked at it and I thought, oh, short rows. I can do short rows. And I can. But not, not if I'm not paying attention. So Tara, oh, I'm not surprised that you made it. It looked really cool. And I got it in kind of guy colors because that's what they had that I liked. So I have uh, charcoal, differentiated charcoals, very, very subtle changes in the charcoals. And 
I got, and I'm looking for the ball bands right now because I know they're in here somewhere. You know, I'm going to go to the blues and the purples and stuff like that. It's, I'm sure you're used to it by now. You haven't woven in the ends. Well, I have a question for you about the ends then, sweetheart, because I am a curious one. So uh, one of these, oh, actually, maybe both of these are Malabrigo. Do, do, do. I have to figure out. Okay, so the thicker charcoaly one is Rios Pure Merino Superwash, 210 yards, 100 gram Hank. That is really just bugging me. Oh, I got it and then I moved. <laughs> because I am stupid stubborn. This is how I've started describing myself. It's not that I'm stubborn. I am stupid stubborn. And I'm going to lose. It's partly because my, I can't keep my hands still. All right, you get the picture. And then the other one, that's the multicolored, pretty purpley one, is Machita. M-E-C-H-I-T-A, which is, again, 100% superwash merino, and 420 yards. And let's see if I can do a better job this time at forcing it. Nope. I was thinking maybe if I leaned on the counter. <gasps> Oh, okay. Well, that one wasn't my fault. That was just a spasm from the camera. <sighs> Someday I will figure out the camera. I actually got a new light because I thought maybe it was that there just wasn't enough light to focus the camera. And now I'm just ticked. But Joy said, <gasps> Joy met Stephen West Oh, when she was in Amsterdam last time. It was knit night at the yarn shop where he's part owner. <gasps> oh. The name is Stephen and something, or Stefan? Is it Stefan or Stephen? Stefan. <laughs> and Tara is fangirling all over Joy from a distance because Joy is, again, way overseas. So that's so cool. That is so cool. Congratulations, Joy. It's like two degrees of separation. Oh my gosh. If you haven't played, um, Six Degrees of Separation slash Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon. Uh, there is a video now. It's a TEDx talk by Kevin Bacon talking about Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon. And and that when it first started, he thought that it was trolls. He thought it was people just trying to be mean. And he didn't he didn't quite get the fact that because he had been in so many movies with so many really good actors, he actually was kind of the nexus of Hollywood. So it's kind of sweet. And he talked about how he tried to parlay it into uh, something good for the world, which uh, it turns out it's a struggle for famous people just as much as it is a struggle for the rest of us. So that's kind of cool. Ah, Joy says it's Stefan and Penelope. And ooh, and Kathy, you said Kathy saw that TED Talk. Ha, ha, ha. Yes, he totally does not get the fact that he is Kevin Bacon. Yeah. I mean, he does. He does know that he's he's famous and he talks about how there are moments where it's really nice to be famous because some stuff does come more easily to you, but not as much as I would have thought. So that was kind of cool. Yeah, I really like him. I personally, I think I would like any actor <laughs> who decided to do Tremors after they already had a career. Uh, if you haven't seen that, I'm not somebody who likes horror movies, just in general, which is why it's so funny that I do Chilling Tales for Dark Nights narrations. But um, it's it's like Alien in the Mojave Desert with um, Dune overlaid on top of it. I know I was going to ask about weaving in the ends. So the problem with the, <laughs> the pattern, there is nothing on the pattern page itself. See, A.T., I knew you'd love that. Tremors. Fred Ward. Fred Ward. Warm spot in my heart. And Tara. <laughs> Tremors is awesome. Yay. See, you are my people. 
Have you guys heard about Get Out? We'll talk about that in a minute. So for the short, short rowiness, let's see if I can get the, the new light on this. Mm. So you can see the fatter yarn here. Uh, oh, actually, that is going to work. Um, that isn't, there's one short row that is just the width of the, the darker yarn. All the other short rows are not surprisingly happening in what look like triangles because they're triangles. However, there are four rows, two front, two there and back again, two, and then another there and back again. So four, four passes in between each one of those triangles. And there is nothing about what to do with the colored yarn as you go across there and back again two full times. Nothing. So I, Tara, have not cut anything. Instead, I have been carrying it kind of like I would at the edge of a sweater. And that's been problematic a couple times because I forgot. But then I went in with, and I'm going to see if I can find the one where it's more obvious that I did it. Oh, this one. I went in with a crochet hook and pulled it along. And you can really see that top V is actually a crochet, crochet stitch. But it was the only thing I could think to do. Boy, those colors really are dark. Um, it was the only thing I could think to do to pull it along because I didn't want to weave in ends. And I see, but I don't blame you. I don't blame you for a second for cutting all of it because I was that close. And then I thought, I'll never finish it if I have to do that. <laughs> uh, so it's a really, really easy pattern. It's really nice. Um, and if you get, you know, nice, soft Malbrigo. Um, it's very, it's very, very cushy and, um, and pretty, I think. And it's so hard to, oh, I know what I can do. Uh, there, now you get some light. If I turn the screen on the computer up, it bleaches everything else out except for that knitting. So, yay. So that was pretty cool. I was very happy to have a, a knitting project that I could semi- what, what is it that Erica taught me to say? Um, potato chip knit? Potato chip knitting instead of idiot knitting. And, ooh, woolly, woolly wench and some Noro sock weight yarn. Ooh, the Noro must be gorgeous. <gasps> and that reminds me, I'm supposed to find, I'm supposed to find a uh, picture for Erica because she is she is still working, but she did actually send me uh, a call for finding finding a picture for all y'all. So I will I will find it, gosh darn it. But in the meantime, I have some other things from you guys to share. And I just have to get there. These are things with um <laughs> things either from the craft literati group uh -huh. pita chip knitting <laughs> and um and some of these just make me laugh so one is from tara because of course it's from tara and it's going to be hard to see so i'm going to zoom in on that again and it says shut up and take my monet <laughs> i have no monet i am baroque <laughs> because I love humor. <laughs> I love humor when you have to know things. That was very funny, Tara. Thank you. Shut up and take my Monet. I have no Monet. I am Baroque. Good times. So that was one that made me laugh. I wanted things that made me laugh. And there's one that made me just very happy because Robin was able to finish. So I don't know if there is a story behind behind the yarn. 
or or what what machinations were required but robin finished what had looked like the unfinishable stash busting baby blanket i think those colors are so cute i never would have put them together and they're so cute they are just adorable so yay robin that was good and then now at i think I think AT, you are the one who posted this. So you can tell me more in the chat window. So it says at the top, is it illegal to, is it okay to run an illegal library from my locker at school? <coughs> excuse me. And uh, it says, let me explain. This is from Quora, Q-U-O-R-A, which is a great place to find answers to things I have found. And uh, the, the person who posted this said, let me explain. I go to a private school that is rather strict. Recently, the principal and school teacher council released a very long list of books we are not allowed to read. I was absolutely appalled because a large number of the books were classics and others that are my favorites. One of my personal favorites, The Catcher in the Rye, was on that list, so I decided to bring it to school to see if I would really get into trouble. Well, I did, but not too much. Then, surprise, a boy in my English class asked if he could borrow the book because he'd heard it was good and it was banned. <laughs> oh, Tara posted it. You loved it. Okay, so Tara posted this. Uh, this happened a lot, and my locker got to overflowing with all the banned books, so I decided to put an the unoccupied locker next to me to good use. I now have 62 books in that locker, about half of what was on the list. I took care only to bring the books with literary quality, and some of those books are Perks of Being Wallflower, His Dark Materials Trilogy, Sabriel, The Canterbury Tales, yes, Candide, yes, The Divine Comedy, that one blows my mind, Paradise Lost, again, mind blown, The Godfather, Mort, Interview with the Vampire, Hunger Games, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, Connecticut Yankee and King Arthur's Court, Animal Farm, The Witches, Shades Children, The Evolution of Man, The Holy Quran, and lots more. And then she goes on to say, anyway, now that I operate a little mini library that no one has access to but myself, it's practically a real library because I keep an inventory log and give people due dates and everything. I would be in so much trouble if I got caught, but I think it's the right thing to do because before I started, almost no kid at school but myself took an active interest in reading. Now, not only are all the kids reading the banned books, but they go out of their way to read anything they can get their hands on. So I'm doing a good thing, right? Oh, and since you're probably wondering, why can't you just go to a local library and check out the books? Most of the kids are too chicken or their parents won't let them buy the books. I think that people should have open minds. Most of the books were banned because they contained information that opposed Catholicism. I limit my library to only the sophomores, juniors, and seniors, just in case. So you can't say I'm exposing young people to material they're not mature enough for. I think that is so sweet. But is what I'm doing wrong because parents and teachers don't know about it and might not? Okay, approve of it, or is it a good thing because I'm starting appreciation of the classics and truly good novels, not just bad novels like Twilight in my generation? Isn't that phenomenal? I just want to go find this girl and and kiss her and hug her and tell everyone that she's the most amazing thing in the world. Because that takes some cojones, right? I mean, that's going up against a lot of people who are allegedly speaking for God, it sounds like, at her private school. Uh, going up against him and saying, no, I mean, the divine comedy, how can... I remember reading um, a thousand years ago, I was still teaching, that the the list, I know, Joy, if, if only we had banned all of the books when we were teaching, we would have gotten all of them read. Uh, I remember reading on a list that there was some, uh, it wasn't an algorithm, it was, it was like a, a checklist. If a book shows uh, children or teenagers having conflict with their parents, then it's out. If it shows them having conflict with adults, then it's out. And conflict by like you know, not not doing what the adults are telling them to do kind of thing. Um, if uh, uh, if the, the devil or demonic forces appears in the book, then the book is out, which I'm assuming actually is why the Divine Comedy and Paradise Lost get in there. But wow, talk about mistaking the letter of the law and the spirit of the law. 
um, uh, supernatural, I'm trying to remember what the other things were, uh, supernatural sex, obviously, um, drugs, um, uh, gratuitous violence, um, vandalism, things like that. You know, anything that would lead a teenager to think that, oh, there's something bad I could go do. Awesome. Let's go do that. So I, that's the only, as soon as I hit Divine Comedy and Paradise Lost, th that came back to my mind. I'd completely forgotten about that list until then. But that's the only reason I can think of, right? I love this girl. So cool. And yeah, you know, Joy, when I was teaching uh, Huck Finn, which is not an easy book to teach. And in fact, I would never have taught it when I was in Southern California. But when I was teaching in New York and all of my students were Black and Hispanic, um, when I was the only white person in the room, I felt much more comfortable teaching Huck Finn um, because I set some very rigid parameters about uh, language that we would be using in the classroom and how I would never say the N-word because it just makes me ill. Um, whether it had an NH, uh, an AH at the end or an A at the end or an ER at the end, I didn't care. It wasn't my word. And uh, and if anybody didn't want to hear the word in class, all they had to do was write an anonymous note and put it on the desk and leave and uh, say, you know, period four, don't want to hear it. And then I'd say we'd have to either substitute a word or pause if we were reading something out loud that contained some of those those words. Other language I didn't have a problem with, but that that word is a particularly vile word. And um, it does. It gives me the collie wobbles. <laughs> the woogies. Um, and that worked. It worked really well. And I did. Every year I had at least one class, if not more than one class, where somebody left a note on my desk saying, don't want to hear it. And I'm absolutely fine. And everybody was always fine with that. Never a problem. But I also knew that it was going to be a hard sell and um, brought in the big what is it? Eight, uh, 11 by 17, the big, the big paper. And uh, so that I was going to teach them how to make a book cover. And so, or maybe it was just legal size paper, whatever it was, it fit perfectly on our paperbacks. And I went through an entire period teaching them how to make book covers and explaining to them the history of this book and why it was banned and how often it had been banned and then it had been banned in New York City up until a few years back. And all this stuff. And then I said, when you, when you leave, I passed out all the books during the class too. So I have all their book numbers. I know who has what book. And I said, on your way out, make sure you grab a piece of paper so that you can make your own book cover. Cause you don't want people on the subway seeing you reading this book. They're going to give you a hard time. I, in 10 years of teaching eight of them in New York city, I never once had a kid take a piece of paper but they all read the book. It's awesome. Forbidden fruit, man. Oh, teenagers and forbidden fruit. It's good stuff. Actually, uh, thing two has been reading. It was uh, an, a unit on the, oh, a unit on the adolescent brain. Hey, thanks. I like my mug too. It is zentangly. I don't like my age. My age did not come out very well at all. But it's uh, it's a little beaten now. It's a little worse for the wear. But I like that part. That came out nice. Um, he started off really ticked off because I don't think his teacher framed why they were reading all this uh, nonfiction all these articles and stuff on adolescent brain and how the adolescent brain works and uh, what are its weaknesses and strengths and, you know, myelination and all this stuff. I mean, they were really reading real stuff, but he was so ticked off. He's like, why are they making us read this stuff if they aren't going to actually use it? And I said, well, what do you mean? He said, they've got all this information about how we think and how we, how we think best and how we get interested and how we get hooked and 
and how we don't and what will make us resist. And it's all there in these articles that we're reading and they don't pay any attention to it. They still do the stuff that isn't going to work and they don't do the stuff that is. And I said, well, are you going to write an essay at the end? And he said, I don't know. I said, didn't your teacher tell you like, are you? I mean, is there a rubric? Is there an assignment? Is there a handout that says we're going to start this book for this unit? And at the end of this unit, no, nothing. Okay. But he was all ticked off because they were supposed to annotate all these things. And it's just stupid. Why should I have to annotate? And I said, well, if you're supposed to annotate it, it's probably because you're going to have to use it at the end, like on an essay. And you would have done half of your work while you were... <laughs> Oh, while you were doing the reading and now you just shot yourself in the foot. He learned the hard way. They did have to write an essay. But part of his point was uh, that adults needed to pay more attention to this stuff than the kids did because the adults needed to use it more. Which is, I think, not a bad thing to say. And uh, apparently he got a good grade on it. I haven't seen it yet, but very cool. Um, some things to look for in the craft lit. This is the, the main craft lit group on Facebook. Um, this was posted with the note that this is a lot easier. This is a much easier read than the big giant biography on the Brontes that came out a couple of years ago that I was using when we did Jane Eyre. And that is on how stuff works. I have, I have to do that to you see that. Um, how stuff works. And this came out recently. This came out on 421. So you can probably find it that way. And then this was posted because it's about a, a radio lab. I don't know if you know uh, most, most people who have listened to NPR have listened to or heard or know about uh, this American Life, but uh, another similar, importantly different, but similar to This American Life show that pops up on NPR is Radio Lab, and this article on transom.org, and again, this is linked to in the Craftlet, uh, Craftlet group on Facebook. Um, this has a lot of really interesting stuff about about being creative and and being creative in different uh, formats than the kinds of formats that we're usually used to. So those two links are back on the Craftlet site, uh, not the Craftlet site, the Ravelry, oh, they're good. Uh, the Ravelry, <laughs> I'm looking at Tara's thing and opening it thinking Ravelry. No, on the Facebook site, Facebook, group craftlet we were just talking about this the other night about how crazy it is to try and explain facebook stuff out loud instead of just going and bouncing around on facebook because of how they've organized things which sometimes makes it harder than it needs to be i think but tara sent her uh oh I have to sign in to see it. Hang on. Maybe. Maybe I can. There we go. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, gosh, yours is gorgeous, Tara. You need to weave those ends in, baby cakes, because yours is beautiful. And that's Noro. Boy, that, does, that looks like Noro, doesn't it? That's just gorgeous. Oh, and your, your other color has a lot more variation to it than mine does, but it doesn't look like it. It's um, overpowering at all. That's just lovely. <laughs> Watch for zombies. And there's Steven. I have my stitch markers in very similar places. So yeah, beautiful. Beautiful work, madam. I like that. And hang on. 
because there's one other thing to share with you. Oh, that's true. You could just tie that. <coughs> All right. Brave New World, 1984, True Believer. This is happening, and it's happening tomorrow. Tomorrow, the 11th anniversary of Craftlet, Justin and I are going to go live with a live stream of our first episode for this podcast. And of course, 1984, Brave New World and The True Believer are still under copyright. So we have figured out a workaround, which we'll explain in the first episode. Um, we're actually going to be doing this mostly on Patreon because neither of us can afford to do anything uh, free right now. And uh, and so as craft litters, um, please let me know what you think um, because you're you're coming at well you you will be coming at this from a very different position than people who are completely new to uh, what we do with books and um, and I value your feedback uh, you guys know you know you know a lot of stuff you know a lot of stuff about uh, perception and you know a lot of stuff about how, uh, it feels to be uh, not just an audience, not just a person who is part of a greater audience, but an active audience member, because you're here right now because you are. So make sure that if you have uh, any thoughts about what we're doing or how we're doing it or how we're delivering it or any of the messaging that you let me know. We're not going to have a Facebook group, but I will be having the live streamed episodes post to the Craftlet Facebook page, not group, page. That's where all of the episodes auto post. Because again, I, and Kathy, I know I just caught the outro. Uh, last week I was editing stuff and went, wait a minute. I didn't change that. I didn't change that. So yeah, uh, I need to do that because it's been nine years for a really long time. And uh, I need to update that anyway. So yes, thank you. And thank you for reminding me because that totally would have left the top of my head. Um, so we're starting with 1984. We are, we're starting at the beginning. And uh, and Vicky, good question. Not Craftlet Patreon. We have to separate it um, because Justin and I are going to be uh, splitting whatever whatever money we make. We're going to be splitting it. And, um, and so I'm trying to remember, I think it's patreon.com slash BNP. We haven't made it go live yet, uh, but I'll put it up on the, the Facebook. Um, <laughs> yes, I think we all should be counting our age the way that I count the years that I've been podcasting by just subtracting randomly <laughs> big numbers, bigger numbers, because May 5th, I'm hitting the half century mark and I'm not I am not happy about this at all really the whole aging thing is just I'm over it but uh but what better time to start a new podcast than then so uh 1984 patreon uh the youtube when we not youtube um the youtube live stream is going to go out on the craftlet channel because that's where I knew I could get people to easily rather than having to memorize or think of a new a new channel. So it's just a new playlist. And it's wrapped up with Craftlet in several other ways, um, business-wise, so that's fine too. And there's something else. Oh, Libsyn, bravenew.libsyn.com. That's the web page that I showed you with the big I in the middle. Um, bravenew.libsyn.com. And it's the Brave New Podcast. And um, and it's connected to the podcast coaching that I'm now doing. So if you have anybody who's been talking about wanting to start a podcast or if you've been wanting to start a podcast, I know, Joy, we were we were talking about your podcast. In fact, pimp, if you're still working on your podcast, pimp it here now because you're here. And 
you aren't usually able to make it in the middle of the night. Um, in age, Vicky, I like this idea. Switch to Celsius. I like that. Yeah, I hung firm at, at 40 for a while. I thought I could pull that off and I can't, I can't pull that off anymore. So, you know, the, the, my mom, I, if my mom is watching or going to watch, when I was a kid, mom and I were always confused as sisters. The assumption was because I was very tall for my age, from a young age, um, that we were sisters. And as as I grew up and she grew up and we were sisters in people's minds, at least until I was well into my 30s. And then I stopped hearing those comments. And it could be because we weren't living in the same city anymore. I don't know. But I recently heard a sister comment again. So I'm catching back up to my mom. I don't know how either of us are going to feel about that. <laughs> Life, I tell you what. Um, so brave new dot lipson dot com. It'll be brave new podcast on iTunes. Uh, BNP. Oh no, I think we're brave new. I think. We're brave, brave new podcast at gmail.com. And I think we're brave new podcast on Twitter, but we're not going to do Facebook. We're not going to do a, a, a actual Facebook page for it. It's just a thing too far. So Joy, what's all gray? Uh Oh, what's all gray? Kathy, I like your attitude. Kathy said, 50 is great. I don't care what people think. And I do what I want. And if people look at me funny, I say, I'm 50. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> I love it. Oh, Craft Nomad. That's the name of Joy's podcast. Craft Nomad. And you are still producing episodes, right? Because Joy is. She's been trapped. She travels a lot. I will pause. And await Joy's response because I know we've got a, a longer delay today. I set it so that there would be a longer delay to try and make sure that there wasn't as much um, stupid buffering going on. But you know, it's it's always um, one one benefit causes different problems. So, uh, oh, I see what you mean, Joy. Yes, you're right. It won't let you put a URL in. Um, and yes, she's still doing it. Is it craftnomad.something.com? Because if you if you write the word dot instead of trying to type a period, it'll work. She said, having had to do this before. Um, but yeah, Craft Nomad, recommend to you another thing to listen to. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I don't think I told you guys that the bar mitzvah, a friend of ours popped up and, and said, do you know how to fix sweaters? And it was, you know, a knitted sweater. And I said, yeah. And he said, do you have any yarn like this? And it was like really nice gray, heathered gray, just like that. And I said, yeah. And he said, can you take my sweater and fix it for me? Sh sure. So Sunday morning at brunch, I was working on a sweater. It was what he was going to wear that day. So he was just in a t-shirt. It was freezing outside. But he had gotten some horrible moth holes in the sweater over uh, over the the boxing period. And, and it's a beautiful sweater. But it was, half of it was pearl side out and half of it was knit side out. And it was a trick to fix. But I did it. Oh, shoot. Okay. So uh, Joy said it wouldn't let her do the dot thing. So every episode has a different problem. Oh, you're doing this on YouTube. Oh, if you're doing it on YouTube, we can hook our channels up. 
because there's a thing that content creators can do so that we can be like Twinkie twins. Ha! Oh, AT, welcome back. No, there's nothing important. Uh, no. <laughs> if you were here, if you saw, did you see Tara's gorgeous uh, scarf, Stephen West scarf? Because that was pretty cool. And uh, I think that's it. I actually am going to have to go pick up thing too, I think, or take him his keyboard. I'm waiting to hear. Actually, I just got a buzz on my phone. I should check and see if the boy said that I need to go pick him up or take him his keyboard. They're doing the auditions for um, the talent show. And so he wasn't sure if he was going to sing one of the songs that he has written or bail. But he's got bronchitis now, so I kind of think he's going to bail. So, Joy, you and I should, um, well, I will find you as soon as we get off the the live stream, and I will try and connect to your YouTube page. So if you go to your YouTube page so that you're in your content creator area, then we can try and hook up that way. And AT, have fun turning in your ID and your keys and all of that stuff. You're done. I'll do a little happy dance for you. Yay. Now you get to go have a nice, relaxing rest of your spring and summer and fall and winter and make lots of pretty stuff. All right. Go make pretty things. Have a great time. I will have an episode coming out for you on Friday. Chapter 66. It's a good one. It's a long one. That's why there's only one episode or one chapter in the, the book, but it's going to be good. All right. Have a great one. I will talk to you soon.